This is like some like skateboarder scene guy that has like a scene name. That's what I thought. I thought you had a scene a name. Scene? <laughs> yeah, dude. And homie was like, where are you from? And I'm like, here? He goes, oh yeah, you sound like it, dude. <laughs> you are OG like YouTube, dude. I mean, I, hey, you said it, mommy. I don't like to say that. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't like to say it. G'day, welcome to Skate Mates. We'll be talking about skating with our mates. I'm here with the good mate, Mr. Spencer Nuzi. Is that correct? It? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, you got see? it. Thank dude, you for I know. I listen, dude. Dude, I listen, I'm stoked. Dude. I'm stoked to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> as usual, I got some questions. There's a series of questions. Some of them are pretty chill. Some of them like more in depth. First question is, when did you start skateboarding and what got you into skateboarding? Okay. When did I start skateboarding? Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> I probably started skating when I was probably eight years old, maybe. Okay. Realistically, what is that? Nine, that was in 90, I was born in 91. Okay. So was that 90? Uh, 99. Nine, maybe? Yeah. Maybe a little bit earlier than that. Okay. Okay, I was probably introduced to it maybe when I was seven. Yeah. Because by eight, I feel like I was already probably playing Tony Hawk for a skater. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I already kind of had like a well-rounded idea of like what it was. And like, I probably had my own board by then. Like the okay. first board that was like a World Industries. Really? That was yeah. your first board? Yeah. Dude, my first board was a Kmart, so. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean like this is my like my first board. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because like my sisters had also like, we had like a weird like banana board, okay. like some weird like other like, I don't know what kind of boards they honestly were. Yeah. Like, I wish I knew what they were because they might have been fire been, boards. Yeah. But to my knowledge or what I remember them, they were like pretty Jerry boards, you know? Yeah, right. Like they were not anything special. Like, you know, just kind of like a Kmart board or whatever, you know? But like my first board from a skate shop, I guess. Yeah, your first complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. World Industries. World Dude, Industries. That's so that fire. With the Indies, I had like classic Spitfires and shit on it. I had Reds bearings. And you were eight and you had that set up. Dude. Yeah, at least eight oh. years old. Maybe nine at that time. Yeah, I had to have been eight. I had to have been. Dude, that's like my, yeah. <laughs> at least, you know, because I think that was when we went to the skate shop. And like I have like a photo of me with it, like holding it. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you, do you know where it is, that photo? I can probably give yeah. it to you. Oh, yeah. You can oh, post yeah. it. Yes, please. Yeah. And I have, like, <laughs> Like a Tamagotchi on and stuff. Dude. Yeah. I might have been older than eight, but who cares? <laughs> I'm gonna say eight. Around that age. But what so what I guess got you into it? I grew up in New Jersey. We were pretty close to New York. We were mm. about like twenty minutes from New York. Oh, so you're close. So yeah, we were always in the city and we'd always like take the ferry over from Jersey to New York. It was just, like always a fun thing to do, like in yeah. the spring summertime. And I always remember whenever we'd pull up in the ferry, like when we would land in like Battery Park area, I remember just seeing people skate and they would like just like I just remember them jumping over like the benches and like yeah. there was like there's benches with these silver like I don't know like things and they were just like doing tricks okay. over them and like I don't like it was such a vague memory like they were probably flipping their boards and doing shoving yeah. and stuff but I you're so young them. you just seen them yeah like, I remember just not around. seeing I've never seen someone skateboard like that like yeah. I had the skateboard like I remember watching kids and they everyone would just like push and use it as like transportation yeah, yeah not even shove it oh really just transportation just you know butt boarding and stuff like that <laughs> nothing anything serious so I remember seeing like the older guys use it and being like whoa like that's yeah. really cool I was like I didn't know you can actually do that and then I think that's when I really got like really inspired to be like, okay, like I want to like do more with this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's wild. I had, kind of had a similar thing, but you've seen it in real life. I've seen it on TV. What was your first like, was it like a skate um, video experience then? My dad had recorded something that was on the a segment on the news and it was people skating the Brooklyn Banks. And there was a dude skating and ripping. And then at the end of the scene, he like ollies off the curb and skitches a bus out of the frame. Oh, so And sick. I was like, what is this? The same kind of thing. I was intrigued. I was like, you know. Yeah, right. I don't know what it like, is. It's it. like, it's like something that's like so rebellious and like cool and like thrilling. Yeah. And like, I don't know. There's something about seeing something that when like you it see skating. It's exciting. It's like, Whoa. Definitely very exciting at that age, I think. Oh, that's very cool. That's very cool that he just like randomly filmed it too. Yeah, like, I don't know why. Like... I think because I had like that first Kmart set up and I okay. just thought it was just, oh, just ride around the driveway, tic-tac, do whatever. I didn't know right? like skateboarding was like this How thing. How gnarly, yeah, you can yeah, take it. Yeah, but that's cool that you said Tony Hawk's as well because I feel like all the skateboarders from our generation have a similar experience of Tony Hawk's pro skater. Oh, big Being time. a big kind of influence. Oh, Jeff said I, the same thing, Tony Hawks. It, it really, because it really is. It's like a staple. Yeah, I feel. Yeah. And then I'm not gonna lie. For like the longest time, though, as long as you like brought up, you skateboarded, someone would say, "Oh, Tony Hawk." Yeah, yeah. They, they would, would know. <laughs> they weren't like, "What's that?" You know. It was yeah. It was always like Tony Hawk though. That was the only skater yeah. they knew. But That's they knew. Sick, man. So you mentioned New Jersey. You were 20 minutes out of the city. What was it like growing up skating there? Did you have a local skate park? Was there spots? Okay, you know? so there was like a few things we had going on. There was not many skate parks. There was like really the only main skate park we had was drop-in skate park and at that time I mean 
a lot of people in the East Coast kind of knew about it because it was one of the only really indoor skate parks. Oh, it was an indoor, I was going to say. <laughs> so it was like that one, and there was like another one called like Hackettstown Skate Park. Oh, the, Jeff mentioned that one. That's so he's funny. from Jersey as well. And so that one was more of like the bike park. Oh, okay. It wasn't like, and it was more like crazy, like was kickers. Was it bigger stuff? stuff? Yeah, like yeah, huge quarter yeah. pipes and okay. stuff where drop-in was like your essential, like your, your normal skate park, pyramid hips rail euro yeah. gap you know like your basics your normal yeah. stuff that you normally see so everyone pretty much skated there and that wasn't too far from me that was maybe like 15 minutes away wow you know, maybe 20 minutes indoor away dude that's yeah. crazy so i grew up skating indoor skate parks pretty much all the time yeah. but then in the city at the time there was a skate park called chelsea piers like it was like the area okay and they had a skate park there which they have a new one now it's all concrete and super oh buttery. They, they redid it yeah it was crazy it's like on the actual like pier like on the water it's pretty cool wow but growing up it was all like masonite and metal so oh. like in the summertime dude it was <sighs> so cooking. sketchy yeah you if you fell on it you'd burn yourself <sighs> yeah instantly. like frying an egg so that was like kind of sketchy so really drop in like even though in the summertime it sucked, it was super hot and humid. Okay. You just skated still at the what, indoor um, park. Are they? They're probably not there anymore, though, right? The indoor. No, unfortunately. How long do you remember when it closed down? Like I don't remember exactly because they moved. Their original location was like in Jersey, like specifically. Then yeah. they moved to like Hilburn, New York, which was like pretty much Jersey, New York. It was yeah, like the right borderline. Yeah, right on the border line. there. And uh, then after that, they closed down. But uh, then I skated a lot of kind of the street though. Like I did skate a lot of street around me and I was lucky enough to skate like the banks when I was younger. Brooklyn banks. Yeah, yeah. Dude, like I have a lot wow. of like footage of me skating there when I was younger, which That's is so cool. sick. Um, and like, I, like even there was like a lot of spots in Hoboken that like I lived really close to, which was like yeah. right, usually they took the train or like the ferry from Hoboken into the city. So there yeah. was like a lot of famous spots right there. I got to skate. Wow. And then, um, and then even where I like grew up, there was like this like industrial factory kind of like you walk through like this like fence pretty much oh. there was like a cut fence like oh, in our neighborhood dude, it was and like people, a little diy it, well it was like a cut fence and like yeah pretty much was like a like yeah like a diy area and then it went into like, an industrial park but yeah. like people would bring like their atvs and like brop through there and oh. stuff <laughs> no and way. so you would see like a bunch of like like dirt bike like a uh, bmx like jumps and yeah, stuff like yeah. that but then like the business park office on the weekend was closed so yeah. then we started skating it and more oh, and more me wow. and my friends and then we'd find all the little bank spots yeah. and like little ledges and benches and stuff dude it's so much fun exploring like that when you're that young and you oh. skateboard dude it's great and of course you find everything because you can't drive so yeah. you're literally you're skating. literally skating past everything everything and, yeah and uh yeah so i mean i definitely had a nice taste of skating street and park growing up in yeah East Coast. that's wild man but yeah, I mean, shit. They built off. Uh, I mean, I was, how old was I? I might have been like nine years old when they built the skate park in my hometown, but it was much like a BMX style park. Okay. The transitions were big and the BMXs would just mob and do lines around the park. It was sketchy then, yeah, for skaters. Yeah, yeah it was like, a different wasn't, time. Like dude. training wheels or like a mini ramp or anything like that. Yeah, it was, it was just like straight gnarly. to like, I think the smallest transition there might have been like five foot. See, so when you're a little big. kid, that's kind of big. That's huge. You know, I learned to drop. No, I learned to drop in at the Sydney Royal Easter Show. It's like a fair they do during Easter. Okay, very cool. And um, it was in 2000. They had X Games was massive, and you could do a BMX clinic and a skateboard clinic. And oh. I signed up for the skateboard clinic. I didn't. There was like no space on the street. They're like, oh, the street. You know, it's we're already full, but you can do um, the vert. And it was a mini ramp, and okay. I learned how to drop in. It was an old Australian pro skater, Mick Mulhall. He still skates to this day, I'm pretty sure, but he taught me how to drop in. Dude, sick. And it was like, um, the boards that we had were like Kmart set up, so it was like X Games, you know? Not, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. at the end of the session, I still hadn't gotten the drop in properly. He's like, dude, just hang back. Like, I'll let you use my board. And then I figured it out. Of course, and you had like the real board. You had like real a real proper bearings. board. Yeah, yeah that, was like like the, the, that was like the... I feel like learning to drop in just opens up a gate to like all the possibilities oh, of the skate park. Dude, big time. And like the, like, I feel like you, uh, just that thrill of dropping in yeah. too is insane. <laughs> it's insane. Like, I looped out a couple times, but. Hey, it's learning. You yeah. Know? yeah. But once you get, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I dropped in at Washington Street Skate Park, one of like the really? deep ends, you oh, know? Oh, dude, you're king. And I would not. Dude, but like just dropping in though it's crazy how that can just be so thrilling still i've been <laughs> yeah. dropping in my entire life and like the fact that i was like oh, i literally like yeah. cruised out it was like whoa like i get it i get why people like yeah. skate this kind of stuff like this is crazy <laughs> oh but man. like oh actually my other skate park i guess i don't have skate park but we had a lot of mini ramps in jersey okay growing up, like was public a, mini ramps yeah Oh, like people's like uh, like they were in skate shops or like oh, okay. our local van store. That's had pretty a tiny cool. Mini ramp. They like let I people skate it. It was like in our mall though. In the like, mall. Like our mall had like a little like you know like your normal little van store you'd yeah, see at the mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they had a mini ramp in there. How big of a mini? Like a like little three a foot. Three by, uh, three by, 
24 maybe. Oh, so wow. it was pretty wide actually, yeah, but that was like, the only thing in there. And so like I spent a lot of time skating that. Yeah. And then there was the Hawk store across the- uh, Hawk? Across, like, yeah, Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk. It was like shop. a Hawk Quicksilver store. Oh, he, that's right, Quicksilver. And like there was, I just remember like, that was like probably like my first like sponsor or hookup really. Yeah, you know, okay. At the time. Hell yeah. But uh, they had Hawk shoes there. You get Fury trucks. Fury yeah. trucks, man. Yeah. You're bringing me back. Dude, now, dude. there was some. There was some fire there. Yeah, yeah. That early. I mean, that late '90s, early 2000s. Oh, like and then skateboarding like realm. Yeah, no, exactly. And then the other place I skated, I heard the other local, not local mini ramp, but yeah, I guess local place that had a mini ramp was this place called Golf World. Golf World. And there was literally a nar you were in a huge freaking golf ball, like a blow up golf ball, and there was a mini putt area, and then another huge mini ramp. So putt putt golf and skateboarding. Yeah. Dude, what a business venture. Right? And like the ramp was crazy. Like it was ginormous. <laughs> like it was probably like 50 feet long. Really? Because like the first like maybe like 10 feet of it was a bank to like steep wall. Yeah. Like a bank with a steep wall and the bank also had like a little curb kind of like ledge on top. And then that area flowed into like a three foot mini ramp and then there was like an escalator up to like a six Jeez, foot ramp. Jeez, dude. And then the end of it had like another eight foot quarter pipe. Yeah. It was insane. Wow. There was a lot of weird stuff like that growing up. I don't know, yeah. Weird I feel like stuff. a lot of that stuff is like people like, skateboarding is booming right now, let's have a Throw business. Throw something together. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And totally. then as time went on, it kind of, you know. Oh yeah. But oh, that's yeah. sick that it was like, that was a time for skateboarding to be, I mean, skateboarding is very much alive these days, but back then it was like all so brand new. It was, yeah, yeah. And they didn't know what they were they doing. They didn't know what Now they know what, what they're doing on, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were there a lot of skate parks you growing up or was there really only that one? Like, um, or like were there more further away from so, Australia or was it like kind of still like dime a dozen? It was like, Early 2000s, we had Lumia Skate Park, which is if you're from Sydney, you might know Campbelltown. Lumia was in Campbelltown. We had that park. It was the biggest talk of okay. the town. Prior to that, um, we had little bowls that were like from the 80s around Campbelltown. And like sketchy ones? Like public ones? Yeah, like, like, like they had been built by the, oh. the city. Okay. Um, there was this one bowl that I used to go to. My dad used to take me there of a weekend. It was called the Mexican hat because it looked like a sombrero. Okay. There was the middle part and then the parts that went up. And that's where I learned to like kick turn and like roll fakey and like turn around and stuff. Okay. It, was, it was all noping. Uh, that's what, that was my next question. I okay. learned to like pump around and turn and okay, stuff. Okay, cool, cool. So that so was my like first, that was a couple of my first skate park was that bowl. Okay. And so then um, they, the council just ripped it out without even saying anything. And they, it took them like five years. They wanted to build this Billabong wetlands, which is like, a public water park okay but it took five years and they ripped that bowl out and didn't tell anybody anything so i didn't even be like oh they're gonna rip the bradbury bowl out let's go have a sash like yeah. it was gone Dang. they just yeah they didn't care that's crazy skateboarding dude, dude people don't care they about don't. You know, <laughs> it's just like whatever we're gonna put in a fucking wetland skateboarding is a crime dude. <laughs> <laughs> your last name yeah it's pronounced newsy yeah but everybody says spencer nuzzy yeah. And you're just like, yeah, I'm chill with it. Yeah, well, it's kind of, oh, I feel like Nuzzy's easier to say. Yeah. New, I feel like Nuzzy isn't as, like, normal, I guess. I, I feel like when you see it, I don't know, I, I guess long story short, too, even, like, as a kid, I felt like people always remembered it as, like, fuzzy, like, Nuzzy. It's, like, fuzzy, fuzzy Nuzzy, Nuzzy. Nuzzy. So it'd okay. be easy to remember it that way, you know? Yeah, yeah. But Nuzzy, you know, that's fine. I, I mean, that's really, you know. Because when I, when I first heard of you, like, back, back in the day, I back thought, that's day. a fake name. No. <laughs> I thought this guy, it's like his, his skate name or something. That's so funny. <laughs> I mean, I've, that's so funny. I mean, I've heard that before, but yeah. like, dude, I don't, that's so ridiculous. Like, okay. no way. You actually yeah. thought that though? Yeah, I was like, there's no, no way this dude's name is that last I, name. I what, mean, what did, do you know what it derives from? It's Italian. It's actually, really? Yeah, so it's actually like Nuzzi, like oh, pizza, like ZZ. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just thought it was like some like, and like around the same time that I first heard of you, you had the stuff going on with Mishka. Yeah. So I was like, this is like some like Weird. skateboarder scene guy that has like a scene name. That's what I thought. I thought you had a scene a name. A scene name? <laughs> yeah, dude. Because <laughs> you know, around that time it was like, yeah, it was like, Mishka was like a, a popping brand I back know. in the, like the scene. <laughs> I know. I was a scene kid. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, I had the nose ring. No way, yeah, dude. Yeah, I had the earrings. Dude, I need to see some photos. Oh, if you during pull that Nishka stuff time? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Wow, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, I was working there, what too. What a throwback. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was working there in LA at Mishka for a few years. Yeah. The homies. Yeah, yeah, you know? man. It, you, know, you, you know, you just, 
you you embrace the company sometimes. Embrace you know? the culture, dude. Exactly. Embrace sometimes the culture. you just become it. You know. <laughs> there was some sick stuff we did though. Like I, I mean, I'm really like stoked. I got to like do stuff with them. Cause it was a it was a clothing. It was like a streetwear brand. Okay, it was streetwear. For some reason, I had I thought it had a connotation with vodka. Was there like a collab with vodka or something? They could have. Mishka, maybe I'm just because vodka is Russian. Yeah, maybe Mishka. that could be it. You know, because yeah, it was like Mishka really means like bear, like bear Okay. Cup. Yeah. And it's usually like, you know, like uh, you'd say it to like your little kid, like my little Mishka. Oh, like my little cub, my little okay. Bear, you know? Yeah, it's like a term of Indian. That's why there's like always like a bear logo on it. Right. But then they got famous for the eye. That That's what I was going to say. My mate had a jacket and it had the eyeball. And it was kind of like the keep watch logo. Yeah. Kind of like slogan. Uh huh. And then they had like the death adders was right. like the other thing. So is it a death adder? I think it's an actual snake. Yeah. Right? Is it an Australian yeah. snake or something? I'm not too sure. It could be. I don't know. There's, There's a lot a of snake snakes though. down there. That's all I, I should know. know. I feel bad that I don't know. Probably gonna... People call me a fake Australian. <laughs> so I don't know. So all I know in the Death Adders sector of Mishka, because it was like a sub-brand of Mishka, and that was kind of the BMX brand, actually. Ah, oh, A lot of people okay. didn't know that. That was, was a BMX. Like, they had a whole off. BMX like culture and scene, actually, with the wow. company. So even like your boy had a BMX. And, really? Yeah, when I worked at the shop, I had like, uh, what's the company called? But I had a BMX bike. Mm -hmm. I can't think it might have been SE. I feel like SE always do um, collabs with brands. I think they did one of DC shoes. It was SE DC shoes, like PK Ripper or something. I need to find a picture of it. Yeah, it if you was can, like, dude. Yeah. But yeah, good time. Good time. I used sick, to whip man. that thing around. Whipping. Because like even behind the shop, there was like a bunch of houses that had like the grass banks. Oh, so it was there's so much to fun them. to just like hit yep. on a BMX. Exactly. Yeah. So oh, fresh. Oh, man. Dude, my name's fake, bro. <laughs> I thought his name was fake. Dude. Who's this guy? I didn't think people actually like believe that. <laughs> Let's talk about your movie moved to California. Okay. What was sparked by it? And like, was it a kind of a hard decision or were your family supportive? Were your parents like, you know? So I moved here the summer between seventh and eighth grade. So in America, it's like junior high and then- So that's, yeah, I was still junior high. Okay. Yeah, 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 before high school. Right. And so at that time, um, my parents were looking to already move to the West Coast because they were like kind of planning on getting retired soon. Okay, cool. So like my two other sisters- Oh, they... so your parents are out here now? Yeah. Oh, okay. For yeah. some reason, I thought that was still bad. Oh, no, yeah. They, they moved out over here. My other two sisters, they, like, they're, at that time, they, you know, moved already out moved already out. and everything. Yeah. And so even they were, they, I felt like when you live in the East Coast, too, like, it's kind of brutal. Like, it's hot summers. It's oh, humid, cold winters. you know, cold winters. And, yeah. like, I can only imagine getting older. It's probably not fun to live in that. Unless you want to move to, like, a lot of retirees go to Florida, huh? Because exactly. it's, like, warm and shit. And so that's too too humid for them. So they're <laughs> yeah, doing like that. Much. And they like California. We And we've been vacationing to, like, Encinitas, Solana Beach oh, for, like, nice. for, for many years in a row. So we really became to know the area You liked well. it already. And so <clears throat> Anna was pretty lucky because I was skiing, like, the YMCA skate park. Okay. And, like, PQ. I guess, no. Oh, the PQ. PQ actually opened up when I actually moved here. There I think. you go. But I think like Poway Park, there was a few other parks that I've been skating. So I kind of knew a lot of the local kids already. Yeah. And so when I ended up like actually making the move here, because my parents were like, are you chill moving now? Like, oh, wow. You were like, you were like, let's I was go. like, I'm so down. Because at that yeah. time, like seventh, eighth grade, like a lot of my friends too, like that were kind of into skating, were kind of getting out of skating. Like they didn't mm. take it as serious as me, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And so when I had the opportunity, I was like, oh, I'm Jumped down. Jumped on it. And then so when I moved here, like literally it was crazy. I remember telling all the kids at like the Y Park being like, yo bro, I'm going to like Earl Warren, like, like you know, next year. And they're like, dude, we go to Earl Warren. Oh, so they already, you already had homies at dude, the school. Dude, it was probably yeah. the, e I had probably the easiest transition ever from like wow. school. Wow, because it's tough being a new kid at a school. That's what I, and so it was funny because literally I remember like rolling, like pulling up the first day, like meeting up with like one or two of the kids and then yeah. like another kid's You're like, in. bro, the kid from the skate park yeah. goes here now. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, dude, it's so That's cool. Sick. So yeah, I was very yeah. welcome. That's very, very lucky in that sense like i that's had friends dope, like the first day yeah that's super so, dope that was like really nice and it was always funny too they'd be like oh bro bro's in my class you know like it was kind of <laughs> funny of course then we'd just like talk skating and yeah, get yeah. in trouble the whole time hell yeah man and then that's when the fingerboarding got super serious okay i'm not kidding really because like that was crazy too. how old is fingerboarding i don't you could you would have Dude, 90s at least i can't i mean i remember tech so, decks but i remember it just being like this is just a tech deck and i think i came across like some yeah, we get that. YouTube, is that a firework? Yeah. Or a gunshot? <laughs> I reckon. I remember seeing like a YouTube compilation of like kids tech decking and I didn't, I was just like, oh, that's just a toy. I oh, didn't yeah. know it was like fingerboarding. So, it had to have been like, yeah, because in 99, that Fingers of Fury video came out and that was like the first tech deck video. And I remember seeing that as a kid. Okay. So it's, it's pretty old. Wow. And like, so I thought I was honestly like the only kid that played with tech decks, obviously. Damn, dude. They're going off right now. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and obviously, like, you know, being a kid from Jersey, like, you know, it was kind of like, 
I feel like skating obviously wasn't that big, and only like a few kids like actually had tech decks, but they like, yeah. collect them because they were like cool graphics or yeah, whatever. Exactly, you know? yeah. But I was the only one that could actually like all the stuff. stuff, you know. Damn. And then no joke, I remember pulling up eighth grade, like you know, like I was saying, you know, new, new to school, new yeah. to all these homies. Lunch breaks out, I see all the homies pull up, and tech I'm decks. Like, Bro, they all had their boards, oh. and they had all their textbooks laid out. Like we oh, had, like you a, set up like a street dude. Homie had a dude. three block ready. We had the little spine <laughs> with the textbook. We had ledges and everything. And I was like, "You guys are like, you guys, you guys like fingerboard." Yeah, like this, yeah. I was like, "You guys actually like." And like, I remember watching Homie do switch flips and switch. Th- and I remember being like, "How?" I'm like, at that time, I couldn't do that. Well, I what could you like Ollie like 180? I could kick shit. flip like, oh, okay. and like I could do kick into like anything essentially at that yeah, point. Yeah. But like just watching someone do like. I've never saw a nollie flip or switch flip on a tech deck. I remember being like, that was so foreign to me. Oh, wow. And, and doing it with, like, style. And this yeah, is on, like, yeah, a yeah. crappy little plastic tech deck. You yeah, know, like back now, without mini, huh? Yeah, they yeah, were, they like, went, not like, as good. There was yeah. no concave, no, like, nothing. nothing. And it was grip tape on top, which was, Legit, like, grip terrible. Tape. Yeah, you yeah, grip fingers. It was terrible. <laughs> but, yeah, and then that was just crazy. Like, I started being like, wow, like, like this is insane. This is the- Y'all are actually, like. You do this too. Dude. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. So you sick. already like you had your your friends already. Bro, I was I was practicing and it was it was just <laughs> yeah, it to paid be. off. Yeah, dude. that's sick, man. I feel like yeah, in Jersey, like during the winter time, like you know, sun goes down earlier. And do just fingerboard at home. So a lot of the skate shops, that's what they did. Yeah. They, a lot of people would do that just because you had not you nowhere else to hang. You know, like yeah. the skate spots or whatever, or skate park was closed or whatever. You go hang out at the skate shop, watch skate videos, and like tech deck fingerboard, like yeah. literally just tech, tech deck. You know. Wow. And I remember that. So many people would too just grab the thumb and just like, you know. There was a kid in my class and he would like put the thumb underneath and I'd always like, you're cheating, dude. <laughs> ben, his name was Ben. Oh, Benjamin. damn, yeah, Ben. A, still getting was, I wonder if he's ben. still fingerboarding. He's probably pro. Still getting hate. Probably pro. <laughs> I can't believe you're hating on him, bro. Damn. <laughs> Better than you, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Definitely. Yeah. I could never, yeah, I just, I tried fingerboarding for a bit, but I just, it was like something that you need to put time into. Practice. And yep. I can already skate, so it was frustrating for me to like have to be like, oh, why can't again? I do this? I can already skate. There's I a few little tricks it. though to like learn. Mm. I could show you, I reckon. Okay, yeah. I mean, I can, I can do ollies and like oh. I can get onto like ledges and stuff, but like the flip tricks. Oh, that's just practice. Though. Yeah, it's like some, I reckon you know, just some practice. tech, some technique, dude. Yeah. That last question kind of leads into this one, getting sponsored. Okay. Because you were quite young skating in yeah. California. I was so a youngster. What, uh, who was your first sponsor and how did it come about? Um, I were, guess my first like real sponsor, because I, I, yeah, I guess like my first real sponsor when I moved out here was Willie's Workshop. Okay. That was probably my first like actual that's real his, sponsor. his skate shop, yeah? Yeah. Yep. That's like where like Willie hooked me up with like boards and nice. stuff. Like that was like my actual first yeah. sponsor. Dude, I felt like you live like the, the, the dream of someone that age, like to be oh, like, it was crazy. skating, sponsored. Like, it was insane, dude. It's so like, wicked. And like while I was visiting, I'd go to Willie's workshop because it was right next to the PQ skate park. Okay, you say what's and up. Then, yeah, I remember meeting a few of them. And I remember being like, oh, I'm going to be moving here soon and stuff. Yeah, and he was sick. like, oh, cool, cool. And then like nice. I remember hitting the park a few times and then you know, one thing led to another and then i was riding for the shop willies and then we put out a few videos and then your boy got introduced to birdhouse damn how did the birdhouse thing come about it's through willie really really yeah because uh willie would like bring me on the skate session the team manager would be on the session Uh the team manager and i like we became like pretty chill friends were you like were you like skating like you'd have to feel like some pressure not really because it's not like i was like I was so young and I wasn't like expecting like oh, you I wasn't just expecting kinda, the sponsor, you know? What yeah, I, mean? I was already enough. hooked up with Willie, so I was like, oh, so I was like, I'm chilling. Either way, I was like, I'm gonna get hooked up with like you know, Willie was hooking me up with the boards already, so like yeah, I wasn't like yeah. tripping on like getting a real big sponsor. Yeah, uh-huh. it was like, oh, if it happens, that'd be cool. But also, I knew I was still so young that I was like, I could, you know, there's so many other brands oh, out yeah. there, so you I wasn't have, like, you're so young. I wasn't married to the idea, I guess. You yeah, know? yeah. So yeah, yeah. it happened pretty organically with the team manager and I like being wow. homies. And, uh, and obviously Willie connecting us and like, I think homies, you know, he liked how at that time it was very like demo based. Mm -hmm. So, oh, the demos were the shit back in the day. So he was, I felt like I was pretty consistent in the park sense where I could do a handful of tricks all the time. So it was like when I was put in the demo situation, I could fire out a handful. You could throw it You know what I mean? It was, it was easy. It was easy. Easy money. Yeah, it it really was, you know. (laughs) So I think that probably kind of helped because skate park demos were so big back then. Yeah. But, um, but El- yeah. Element come to my local park. 
Yeah, Bam was there. Uh, oh, so when sick. I was, uh, yeah, before oh. I knew Bam, but yeah. Oh, sick. I had, a, yeah, I remember I had a, oh, what element board? I felt like I had a Bam, I remember having a Bam board though. It might've been even, I don't know if it was a toy machine. It might've okay. been an element. Oh, remember, wow. I remember having it though, literally before I actually knew like. Of him. Before he was like Bam Bam. Yeah, yeah, know? Bam Bam. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's how Bird House happened, though. Damn, dude. That's wild. How old were you? You would have been like 15, 16? Yeah. yeah, okay. So right in the, the prime of like, you know, being able to jump down shit and hurt yourself yeah, and still be okay. Flicking at Yeah, my ankles didn't hurt yet. Yeah, you know? yeah. Wow, that's wicked, man. That's, yeah, that's a trip for me, dude, because I don't know, maybe like when I moved out here skating with everyone, like the first time I kind of skated with people was the PAL team. Okay. And I was kind of like, oh, man, I'm, I couldn't skate. I was that in my head about it. Oh, damn. I just couldn't be myself and skate because I was so, like, shook. Dude, I'm around some, like, you know, some, like, really good people here. Bro, you deserve to be there <laughs> as well, though. Yeah, but, like, I think it's just that, that uh, what's it called? Style matters. And you were there. <laughs> that's what it right. Like that's imposter what I syndrome or something? Oh, my. Nah, dude, yeah. dude, I reckon you're supposed to, if you're there, you're supposed yeah. to be there. Yeah. You're and like just having, not having that confidence in myself to be like, oh, I can skate, I know my abilities, I can like hang with the boys. I was like, I'm a new kid at I'm, a, I'm the new kid at the school. Oh, I just moved to America. Block, All of a sudden, I'm in this you know situation. Yeah, and I'm like, how do I? Uh, I, I can see that. You know what I mean? Scary. <laughs> I get that could be kind of scary. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, but it was chill. Like now, it's like I don't care. Like I can go and skate and you know whatever. You know, just you know, just you do know, my thing. I'm not too impressed about you know, it. Thank you. Bro. I feel like you mentioned, like in our past conversations or something. I read, watched a video or something. You mentioned going to college or something. I did. What did you go to college for? <laughs> Why is it funny? Why is it funny, dude? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I, like you, I just feel like people probably didn't, don't expect that maybe. Yeah. He went, he's a college dude. I know. Like, I what's have, that song, Asher Roth? I love college, you know that song? Oh, yeah. I the, love college, you know. Yeah, that, <laughs> I know what you're talking, talking about. Well, I went to, I went to FITM. I went to the, so I went to fashion school. Okay. So I have a oh, that's dope. I have a merchandise marketing degree. Right. And so that's where I actually met my wife, Mick. Okay. So we actually worked on like a project together and then dude. that's where we met. And then, yeah. But yeah, I have. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. So like, I have a lot of background in like textiles. Like, mm -hmm. I know like a lot of fabrics, as with the, which kind of actually led me to my first job out of school. Okay. I worked for like a whole shoe manufacturer. Wow. So like, we did a lot. Like, I mean, I've been doing like wear testing, I guess, for so long, and product testing, yeah. development, um, like so many things. And like working for that brand led me into work, like kind of owning my own little Nuzzy brand. But we yeah, had yeah. That going That's on sick. for a little while. But yeah, it was crazy. But yeah, I, have, I went to college. That's sick, man. <laughs> That's like, yeah. But I remember, I thought, oh, maybe he went for like, I don't know, just something. Yeah. But I didn't expect it to be like that. That's actually a really like useful like. It's definitely like it's funny. Skill. Yeah, it really has. I guess that just like the merchandise marketing, obviously. Merchandise applies, marketing. It just okay. applies to a lot, obviously, and like yeah. it was so funny because I remember like graduating and. I think after I graduated, that's when they finally developed a social media class. Right. Which is uh, so funny, I thought. Okay. You know, because like, it was still so new. Yeah. You know? I feel like I caught some videos of you at some point, you were living somewhere in LA in an apartment. Oh yeah, and those I, are some early like day in the life. So I was yes, going to and I then. feel like that was the first kind of like, skate influencer type of thing because I, I was like who is this dude and what do they do i, I kind of didn't understand it yeah but looking back that was very like forward for the time so after so i guess like it really was honestly and yeah like, what i realized that i started doing because obviously riding for birdhouse i uh -huh. was doing work with tony hawk's youtube channel ride Oh, the so ride that ride channel. is Hawk's channel. Yeah, that I thought was ride all... was just some company. Oh, well, I mean, it was. It was all underneath, like all under, like the Tony Hawk like foundation, like umbrella okay. or whatever. You know, yeah, or yeah. Whatever you do, or nine hundred films, I think maybe yeah. technically is what it all Man, is underneath. Hawks, he's yeah. So very, they've been yeah, yeah they've been doing that for like that was the essential like you know before I felt like that's even like they were the first <clears> YouTube <throat> I feel even before Thrasher before Transworld yeah. before all that you know it was like that was one of like the main skate 
YouTube hub. Stuff so he, he, he Hawk hit you up and was like, hey, like, can you like, you know, help out some vids? Yeah, essentially, because yeah, since I was writing for the team, they were doing this and, you know, they were like, oh, we need to do trick tips. And we are, I've already made a bunch of other trick tips with my friends, like prior, like joking ones, like yeah. some early ones. Like you can look up like early, like how to's videos of me that are not ride produced, like right. even prior. Yeah, so yeah. like even we always thought it'd be fun to do those kinds of things. And then obviously I kind of learned that you can make a lot more money doing these types of gigs and things like that, yes. you know, like being like, you know, early YouTube stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, like people yeah. didn't realize what I was doing, but I was like, whoa, I can make way more money doing this than, than actually skating. Yeah, hucking yourself you and know, and so, yourself And a lot out. of people didn't really understand that at the time. I didn't understand, like, who is this guy and why are they doing this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I got a lot of hate for it, obviously. Oh, really? Know? Oh yeah, tons of hate, because it was so new back then, obviously. You know, YouTube was such like a corny thing too. Like if it, you were to do, like they didn't even yes. know. It was so weird, you know. What, people. I mean, shit, dude. Like I talked about this with Jeff, like the hate, like how did you, because you seem like a very chill, positive type of person. because well, like, I always knew that even if it's, like, I always saw like good or bad, either way they were still commenting. Yes. Or something, you know? Yeah, so they were still like, engaging. And, so and, I was like, oh, know? I'm still getting more. And I mean, some of the companies that I was like doing things with or wear, you know, like whatever I had to wear or whatever, like yeah. I got paid by the number. Wow. So it's like, I, I was like, oh, I don't care if people are hating the number of views is still I'm going up. Oh, I'm still going to get yeah, paid. So like, dude, it doesn't really matter. Dude, you are OG like YouTube, dude. I mean, I, hey, you said it on me. I don't like to say that. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't like to say it. But, but like, like I said, that was very early for the time back uh, then. I feel like that kind of thing was probably like the last 10 years. Yeah, it's crazy, huh? Wow. Yeah, some of those like that early ride mine, videos man. are so old. It's crazy. So okay, because there was a there was a tr I, I spoke to Dan about this, right? I was like, yeah, I watched this ride channel video. It was a how to how to nose grind, and it was at PQ. He's like, it's probably Spencer. I go, it wasn't. It was some. They um, did it with a bunch of other people. Yeah, it was some dude, skinny jeans and a beanie. I feel like he was missing a tooth, maybe. And he was, he taught me how to nose grind. Oh, nice. Yeah, but, but yeah. ride channel, dude. Yeah, no, that was the skate hub, dude. Like for yeah. news, like there before, before Skateline MBD and everything, uh -huh. uh, there, I forgot what the show was, like the Weekly Buzz or something. Yeah. Something like that on the ride channel. They had a few other, like, other sub videos that were kind of like what we see now. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and yeah, I just happened to have like one of the trick tip, the trick tip segments, you know, um, and. That blows my mind. Was he like, I'm trying to think, right? Like, was Tony like thinking like ahead, like, hey, let's do these videos, even though nothing like that kind of existed. I don't it was know very if it in its was infancy. Maybe him and his team. Yeah, did yeah. It, like okay. the company behind it, like, yeah. did it at all. I don't know if he was essentially the, the main source. He could have been, I have no idea, honestly. Yeah. Like, I don't know that extent of it. Right. But I mean, it was kind of crazy. It was pretty early for that kind of thing. Very early, dude. Just funny, too. And people will be like, oh, dude, like, they'll like, be like oh i don't know those like bring up those things and i'm like they'll bring it up like it wasn't that long ago but those it was videos a long time ago. are really old yes. like those are almost i mean they're all easily over 10 years old yeah 12 15 12, years old 15, I yeah, feel like, old, dude. maybe even older maybe even 20 years soon that's scary to say wow i'm th i just turned 33 and it's kind of gnarly it goes quick doesn't dude. it after like 27 it's like boom oh, you're already man. 30. oh it's crazy yeah next question here it's a really interesting question, as I always say, all these questions are interesting. Um, your side hobbies and interests outside of skateboarding. Let's talk about that. Because so I, I, after you doing me the tour of the house, I see that you're quite the avid collector. I am. So let's talk about some of your side hobbies and interests outside of skating. Oh man, which I don't know where to start. There's just so start with the, just. Okay, I guess um, besides skating, I guess I play a ton of video games. Okay. I play a lot of what video games. What kind of video games? I play a lot of Nintendo games. Okay. I'm obviously, I've been playing a lot of Switch, but obviously yeah. on the Switch, they got a few online games that you could play like old N64 games still. So yeah, yeah, play, like, I mean, I still have my N64. I've seen it, yeah, he's still got Nintendo I, 64. That was like my, I got, you know, the N64 That's OG. Yeah, yeah, That rapping. was like the first console that really got me into gaming, I guess. Because mm -hmm. like we had Super Nintendo and like the NES one growing up, but like, yeah. I didn't really like, I mean, I could tell that they were older when I was growing up because I Because they were already kind of old by yeah, that point. Yeah, so like I started playing N64 and playing like Mario Kart and like just playing Zelda, playing like, yeah. I don't know, even just, uh, what else was it really killed? I think Mario 64 also like changed my life. That too. was the, I feel like when I was growing up, six, Mario 64 was And like, Mario Party, obviously. Yeah, yeah. That was Mario like Party my game too. So like there was a ton that like I just, Nintendo just, I love Nintendo. Yeah, love Nintendo yeah. games. I play a lot of Splatoon right now. It's like the shooting game. It's like okay. the octopus. 
also on Nintendo. It's like you're a little squid, and you're like paintballing and shooting. You oh, can wow. swim in the ink. Oh, okay, that's really and, cool. And like you, uh, it's very skate related. There's yeah. like skateboards in the game that you can like put in your locker and stuff. It's pretty wow. cool. All the weapons are hilarious. <laughs> but then obviously I play Call of Duty. I'm okay, playing a lot cool. of games on, on my PS5. I've been playing a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. Prop Hunt has been one of them. Okay. So like, do you know what Prop Hunt is? I do not. So one team is shooting. And right. the other team is hiding as props. So okay. you could literally be like a bench uh -huh. and like you can be like you can like duplicate yourself and like oh, put wow. your places and you can put it yourself in weird places and they try to come and hunt and find So it's you. kind of a strategy game. Because yes. I feel like you can if you were to like pose as a chair, you could just so yeah, exactly. So like a lot of people like you know the map, so you uh, kind of start okay. knowing where things kind of go. Yeah, and stuff. sometimes things just pop up. But and you're sometimes like, That's weird. people are good. No uh, hide and sneaky ass spots, yeah. or like they'll flip the item backwards and then like go up to a wall, and you'll be uh, like, oh, you, okay. you know. So people are pretty creative. Is it online? It. It's online. Okay, yeah, that's and always fun. And it's like you're two types of players. It's like you're either you find one really good hiding spot and you're there the entire like three or four minutes or you're just running around Camping. the map like, okay. you know, like yeah. changing your item and like it's so funny. Wow. But um, so yeah, gaming. Think, gaming big time. Fingerboarding. Fingerboarding. A lot of fingerboarding. Yeah. Um, I'm, I am pro fingerboarder. Okay. I have a pro model. I, okay, that's, okay. that's I where I was heading models. because he just showed me like a, a stack of like fingerboards. Newsy, newsy, newsy. Yeah. It's like, How did that come about? <laughs> did you have to like go like into like a comp and like, you know, so what's I, up? Like, I'm so, here, dude. So, it's, so actually this is a great story. So from eighth grade, uh -huh. remember all my fingerboards? Yeah, you're fingerboarding like, the whole time. So great practice, great practice. Little yep. did I know, right? It all eventually. We're going to fast forward now to like 2000 and like, I don't know, like, 15 or something maybe yeah. let's say we're in la trying to get back like randomly my friend and i are trying to get back into like tech decking right? okay so we're trying to find it and during this time tech deck actually almost went out of business yeah there was that kind of that you slump. couldn't find them anywhere yeah. so we were hunting them down offer up garage sales oh you were like going oh, deep and online, like dude. i wanted like specific like features and benches and ramps like yeah. old ones you know so i was like really trying to dig for some and like dude people were trying to resell them too for a lot of a money lot of, yeah so i was yeah, like we, oh, I, yep. I ain't doing that and then so we were in Big Bear at my homie's like he had like a skate shop snow shop for like a very small period of time but okay. he had actual fingerboards there. Right. And I remember being like, "Oh, what are these?" Yeah, cuz it Who was wood. These? Yeah, it was yeah. wood like urethane wheel. I was like, "Whoa." Oh, like yeah, like And then I was like and I haven't used one in like kind of in a while. So I was like kind of rusty, but I was uh -huh. still like kick flipping and he had like a little bench and stuff and so nice. I was like I was like kind of shredding it and he was like whoa bro he's like you're actually like pretty good and i was like thanks dude and i was like how much like are these and they were probably like 60 dollars completes maybe a little okay. bit more i feel like that's kind of cheap pretty, I, yeah it's pretty cheap compared honestly. to these days yeah, for, like a fingerboard like, setup yeah because they could be over a hundred dollars yeah now. so yeah. at that time i'd be like whoa and he was like well bro they i think cost he said was like 20 bucks or something or 15 bucks so yeah. he was like just give me that and you can take one and take like an extra board or whatever nice. and i was like dope so he gave me like my first fingerboard essentially you know and so I remember being home with Nick one day and it was like a rainy day, like couldn't skate, couldn't go do anything, not, you know, couldn't go snowboarding, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And she was like, why don't you just go film some of your stupid fingerboard stuff? And I was like, you know what? I will. You're right. <laughs> and so I remember making like an edit, you know, yeah, and then yeah. like going to buy a goo board. Right. And goo is a company that makes the fingerboards. Like I started like geeking out because I was like, I'm going to look into like all these wooden fingerboards yeah, manufacturers now. Manufacturers you know? and stuff. Yeah. And, and yeah. then goo made all these different shapes and like sizes and everything. So I was like, whoa, this guy is sick. Like he knows what he's doing. So I remember like literally ordering a board and then he hit me up being like, oh, dude, like I used to like, I know you're like a skater. A lot of fingerboarders don't actually skate. And yeah. I was like, that's weird. I, yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. I, I just assumed skaters fingerboard fingerboarded. Too. Yeah. And so. We kind of had a little interaction. He saw me like post a fingerboard video or two and he goes, oh dude, you're actually like pretty Ripping. good. Yeah. And so he kind of helped inspire me and then he kind of like hooked me up with some boards. So okay. To say. You're on flow. You're already yeah. on flow. I was a flow bro. Yeah. Wow. I became a flow kind of quick. He was flow now. fingerboarding dude. Yeah. He was pretty cheap because they were expensive. You know? Yeah. And so he was flowing me some decks at first <clears throat> and then um, he, he like flowed a few other people because his dude, his Instagram, I felt like when I first followed him, he probably had like. 3,000 followers, you know, okay. he was a pretty small company at the and time. And blew up. And then it got bigger and bigger, obviously. And it was, it was so cool to be a part of that growth, you yeah. know? Because he didn't really have a lot of people. It was me and this other kid that essentially turned pro first. Right. And the other kid doesn't even fingerboard like anymore. Uh, I don't even know kinda... where Sarge is at right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you're seeing this, man, we Shout miss out you. Shout out Sarge? Yeah, Sarge, S SB right there, man. He was Sarge, or Sarge FB. Oh, fingerboard. Yeah. yeah, I said yeah. SB because... Skateboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyways, but he, he was like one of the other OGs because my bong graphic, he was the lighter graphic. Oh. 
Oh, so, so it was like, like a matching kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so. we did like one like of like a Jerry Young picture of me, like a little, like I had like a helmet on at the skate park and like we used one of those photos. Yeah, and then sick. we had a young photo of him too. So That's we were dope, like dude. the kid photos, it was wow. so funny. So but did um, you have to do like, I just post, I would just post. You just content. post? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Man. Just, you know. Man, that's crazy. Because yeah. I, I feel like that's like. Um, but Pete, there are contests though. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen people do contests. I've seen people do meets. Like, um, I follow a few kids from back home and they're like all about fingerboarding and they go to these meets and stuff. Even here, they're oh, just like. Big time. So even heaps like. Heaps of people are just fucking fingerboarding, bro. Big time. So yeah, even. So, Blows my mind. Dude, even, so every day I go get coffee at Cosmic Bloom, which is our local coffee shop yeah. in town. Shout out Cosmic Bloom. Shout all the homies there. Um, so anyways, they all, they're like a huge, I walked in there, or I don't even know who, because it was originally Steel Mill, which was like Riley mm. Hawk's uh, coffee oh, shop. Oh, so there. that was his, okay, I wondered so, where his coffee shop was. So that was there, and then they they dipped out, and then these other guys took over, and yeah. I don't know who told me, but they're like, oh, bro, Spence, like, you must go there all the time. They have all this fingerboard shit there. And mm. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I went, and I remember being like, Oh my god it was just they had like a bunch of fingerboard stuff like up on their th it was almost like a little library thing you you know take oh, when you use wow, money now that's and so sick. i ended up literally becoming like they are all awesome like people and yeah, like yeah, end up sick. like hanging there so much more and then obviously they all fingerboard so like yeah. we'll just be like growing down having coffee and just, just seshing so hard man and like even this morning i was there for like 30 extra minutes i swear just, just we were all, like one of the homie like this like homie casey he's like a big fingerboarder brought in like three or four cement ledges. So we had like a full oh, wow. park set up. That's cool because I see people building their own stuff to like fingerboard on. It's have, so fucking rad. Oh dude, I have a fingerboard park that I built that's in my car right now. Dude, it's like, it's, I remember seeing like people like post like um, tutorial videos of like how to make your own like bench or how to make oh, your own time. like slappy curb. And like these dudes with like full on Home Depot project like a board and you know, like a chicken wire and shit and then cement and yep. like the fake grass, yep. the AstroTurf dude, gap, Dude, when you see my little park, hydrants. you're gonna die, dude. I can't wait to show you. <laughs> and I'm like a dough boy, you know, I help dough out. Boy. Because um, oh. my, my wife is the- uh, Yeah, let's talk about it. Is, is she is the, um, the cookie decorator. She's like the cookie teacher. Mm -hmm. She's like- She teaches the classes and stuff, huh? She does, yes, we do classes here. She's also like Food Network, you know? Nice. So I think that's what really put her on the map, you know? Yeah, She's yeah, done like the, the Christmas cookie <laughs> challenge. Oh, look at this guy, just drop People it. are gonna talk shit about me in the comments. I don't care, watch the video. We're having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, essentially, I'm her dough boy though. So my nice. other, my other just... hobby is, I'm usually, and like, but people are surprised when we teach the classes, uh -huh. like they'll ask me if I can like do anything. And I'm like, oh, I can outline and flood. I've done, wow. I've had to do like hundreds of cookies with her, like for orders and yeah, stuff. So yeah, like, yeah. I, I've gotten pretty good at it. So yeah. I always tell them. Man of many talents. I'm like, if she can teach me, she can teach you guys. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's cool. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like right, realistically, dude. cause like some of them will come in and they'll be all newbies and kind of scared. Yeah, of I'm course. Like, no, that's, like, it's scary trying a new thing, dude. Yeah. It, and then like, it is a different medium, but like once you get, it's like, it's like with anything though. As long you get those few techniques and learn a few things it's like okay like you, you you get it and usually by like their third cookie they decorate they're like oh i get it now yeah like, you can see things kind of like working now you yeah, know yeah 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 it's, it's dope, pretty man. cool to see the progression yeah it seems like you're always posting like you guys must have classes pretty often oh yeah every week usually wow yeah so that's what we rebuilt the studio in the back yeah, of that yeah. but then we still like collab with a few other bakeries and we do okay. like classes in their bakeries which is cool dude my missus is it really into like crumble Oh, dude. every week it's, it's she, and she told me I'm like that's kind of smart. Every week there's like a new drop, and then Big like time. they make it fresh on the spot. The other one I need to tell you about is Black Market Bakery. Black they're like, Market Bakery. They're the, like they're the other homies. There's okay. like another one that opened up in like Oceanside over here. Yeah. And dude, their pastries. Bowman. Oh yeah. <laughs> She's oh, yeah. Old. oh yeah, they're good. Dude, they're it's good. tough because like sometimes places have vegan stuff, and like sometimes they don't. Sometimes I'll sneak it like a. a uh, like a nibble of my girlfriend's cookies and I regret it because I can just taste milk and I'm like, oh, why did no. I do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got it, it dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there was a kid at my school. He was kind of an entrepreneur for the time. He worked at Subway. I probably shouldn't be. Oh, this is when we were kids. He would um, take them He would cook the cookies, take them to school and then sell them for like a premium price. So he Smart would have man. he would have a dozen cookies or so and just little, lunchtime recess boom boom, 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 dozen, boom 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 yeah five bucks a pop something like it was like two I don't know how much they are in the shop but he would sell them at a premium and then he'd be yeah wow that's probably very illegal but I'm not friends with him anymore so hey bro good for him <laughs> he's good, good for him dude that's, entrepreneur yeah that dude's hustling the cookie he's hustling dough that's yeah. a real dough boy I like <laughs> that's it that's a real dough I back boy, him dude. I back him.
This was my second tattoo, the back of my leg. Yeah, I reckon that. And hurt. it was, um, it was done by that friend that I was talking about, the the Subway Cookie dude. No. It was his older brother. Oh, I think it's. Okay. And he was like a, a pretty well-known graffiti writer in my okay. hometown. So like I was in the graffiti at that age, everybody was. And he just started tattooing and I was like wanting to get something. So I got a Hanya mask on my foot. And then I was like, dude, let's just leave my leg up. I was like 17 at the time. Dude. Yeah. He was just tattooing at this little flat in uh, Riverwood, New South Wales, which is just outside Bankstown. I don't think anyone knows what I'm talking about right now. They but, might. Um, yeah, and then he just like outlined this massive koi on the back of my leg, dude. That and then so painful though. It wasn't that bad because when you're young, tattoos hurt less. And then since then, like I worked at a bunch of shops, about three or four other people had like tattooed on this leg. And yeah. Why is that? It I don't know, dude. more now, huh? Yeah, as you get older, your body's just less resilient to the pain of being tattooed. It hurts. It does hurt. I haven't had a tattoo since uh, I left Sydney. I got my chest finished and then that was it because I was like, this shit hurts. I'm done for now. And I still haven't got a tattoo yet. I mean, I can't think of my... What's your, your most painful was your sternum, yeah, yeah? that was definitely my most painful. Yeah, that was... I remember just like my, I was sweating. My back was so sweaty after yeah, that like, the yeah. whole time. I was like, Ooh. That's a natural reaction to sweat from tattooing. Like I said earlier, you're a very positive, chill, floaty kind of person. And it's, uh, it's, 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 it's very, um, what do you call it once you're around people and it spreads? It's um. very... Um, What's the word for it? Someone comment below what yeah. the fucking yeah, word is. I know what you it's mean. contagious. Okay. You have a very contagious, happy personality. Thank you, thank you. Have you always had that kind of vibe I guess about so. you? It must be the smoke in the air or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is, dude. What uh <laughs> <laughs> Damn dude, that's a trip to me. Cause some like I'm like, you know, I'm a p I'm a human being, obviously. I'm a person. Yeah. Sometimes I, I, reckon, I, some I reckon. <laughs> sometimes I feel really good, sometimes I feel shit. But it's like, I'm um, kind of, I mean, everybody goes through their shit times and their good times, but I feel like you're naturally just always very chill, medium in the middle. And you're just very light, you know. I go with the flow, stuff. dude. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. Sometimes wild, you can't man. fight it. You just got to just live it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I need to apply that to my life. I don't dude. know. Maybe because like, you know, I just, just live life every day, man. Yeah. You just got to live it up, man. You just, you, as, as like high guy as that sounds, you just got to, you know, you got to take it all in, man. <laughs> A wild card question. Biggie or Tupac? I think, like I, I mean, I listened to definitely more Biggie growing up. Yes. Definitely Biggie. more. Yeah. But I obviously do like a lot of Tupac. Yeah. I listen, I listen to both, but I like Biggie definitely more. Definitely. He says more better though. Is that where you got that? From? Probably, and okay. I think it might be an East Coast thing. Cause okay. my dad says it too. Really? Like my dad says Dude, it Dude, your dad, a lot. your dad sounds like the fucking homie. He's pretty chill. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, he's pretty chill. <laughs> and like you can hear his like his like Long Island, New York accent nice. over from like a mile away. Yeah. It's okay, so you, funny. yeah, I guess. Yeah. You were young when you moved. Oh, to dude, when seat. I first moved here, people were like, "Why do you talk funny?" Really? Yeah. Cause I thought you were always from here. Well, I mean. I've learned, I mean, like, you've adapted I've, I've over adapted the years to the, to the, to the Calibra, you yeah. know, because even we were at, like, I forgot we were eating, we were getting a drive through and homie was like, where are you from? And I'm like, here? He goes, oh yeah, you sound like it, dude. <laughs> and I was like, sick. Mick was like, what just happened? Yeah, Is that like yeah. an NPC, like, question? <laughs> this is Skate Mates, where we talk about skating with our mates. I'm here with the good mate, Spencer Nuzi. We're about to hit this mini. Thank you, my dude, for having me. Thank you for coming on. I had a rad time. <laughs> dude, good Bang. stuff. My buns hurt. <laughs>